You guys have a fantastic day. So if you've been watching us for a while or you're new to us, my daughter Sasha has something called sensory processing disorder and it's all about the touch and the taste and the senses of the body. She had it really badly in the beginning to the point where she wouldn't do certain things like touch shaving cream, touch wet dog, touch wet grass, touch leaves on the ground. We work with it on OT a couple times a week at school, PT a couple times at school, and I work with her at home to desensitize her and hopefully, you know, get over the hump of being so sensitive to certain sensory objects. So I often like to do arts and crafts with Sasha. So today we're gonna teach you how to make some homemade finger paint. And it's why I like to make homemade finger paint with Sasha is due to the fact that I'm always close by, but I could get a phone call, I could have to go to the bathroom. Sasha is still a huge sensory seeker, which means that she doesn't like to just once touch it. She likes to put her mouth up to it. She likes to lick it sometimes. She likes to sniff it. It's all about how she takes in the senses for her on a personal level. So I really like to make this homemade finger paint with her. So gosh forbid she wants to lick it or touch it i know it's not going to be toxic and she can still do a great arts and crafts project and all you'll basically need is food coloring water salt and flour and a little bit of your time and i am going to show you how a couple things around your house can also be used as natural colors as well or you can also add in kool-aid packets if you'd really like to so Sasha and I are about to make our homemade finger paint. And the crazy thing is, like I told you before, there's so many household ingredients around you that you can use for natural dyes. So I have two on hand that we're gonna use. And I actually just take a sprinkle of this and it turns it brown. And Sasha will have a juice box and she'll actually put a couple of squirts in and it turns it purple. And we have lemon juice for some lemon. Um, we have mint extract, and you can put a little bit of that in there, and it turns it green. So if you didn't want to use, you know, um, food coloring, or I'm, I'm having a brain fart right now, or you want to use Kool-Aid, that you, there's just tons of natural things that can actually go and dye your um, finger paints around the house and if you need to use a little bit more add a little bit more in and yet again if you have a sensory seeker child like I do then you don't have to worry about anything going near their mouth and if they do lick their fingers that's totally edible non-toxic all my ingredients are in the saucepan ready to cook on up and now I just have to wait till it boils and thickens a little bit and then cool down in the jars in the refrigerator and we're ready to paint ready ready rub it all over your hand like this and that's how we can do a handprint oh my gosh Sasha can do it too look at that here how me do one ready put some on your hands ready let me see you ready oh my gosh are you gonna put some on your hands yeah press it on the paper just like this there you go. <gasps> good handprint see oh you now make... I got wet my hands. Okay. So I think it was not a good day to try our sensory art project. Somebody's having a very high type sensory day. 
She freaked out after a couple of minutes of doing paints. Usually we get about five to 10 and that's usually our limit of touching sticky slimy things. But today was about a two minute limit. So definitely, definitely is today is a high red zone for the sensory. And she left me and she came and sat down in here and she ran away. What do you have to say for yourself? What do you think? You find a lot of leaves? Almost. Almost. Still working on it? Got to find just the right perfect ones. There we go. Okay. You got enough for your project now? Almost. Okay. Sasha had the really creative idea since our sensory art was short lived. She wanted to go out to the yard and she wanted to make her own tree. So she went and picked up all these branches and all these leaves and some glue. So she wanted to make her own personal tree to keep inside. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah. How do you make a tree? You ready? Yeah, let's get started. Ah, oh God made a tree. Sasha and me glued down all these pieces on just a piece of cardboard. It's beautiful. I love it. But I still need one more thing. You got to go back on the yard and get something else? Yeah. Okay. You want to go out by yourself or you want help? I want help. Okay. What piece is it? Come down here, don't go too far. So she found her missing piece. Show everybody your last missing piece. So I guess this is the one. Now we can finish your project? Yep, we can finish. So, are we finally done? Yes. Oh my gosh, after searching high and low, we found the missing piece. Wait, wait, wait. What? Um, this piece is Sweetie, not... I think we're done. Are you right? I think we've picked out half the yard. It's beautiful though. So just remember the next time your child is having like a high sensory day or they're completely bored out of your mind. My yard is completely filled with sticks and leaves on the ground. Sasha just sat at that project for over 45 minutes. And it was like a treasure hunt in our backyard too. Oh, find this leaf. Oh, this piece is missing here. So free things to occupy your kids are right in your own backyard. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Have a great night.